one of the things we say on this podcast quite a lot is our superpower comes from our biggest wounds. So were there something in the past that happened that inspired you to say, Hey, when someone is in need, I'm going to help to the best of my ability. Is there any stories like that? In terms of a personal story. So my sister and I are almost the same age, almost identical. She's 10, 11 months older than me, as we like to say, Irish twins. And she was born with a very severe case of type one diabetes. Mm. And she ended up in hospital probably a couple of, a couple of months a year. And her doctor at the time said that she had a year to live. And the next year they said she had a year to live. And as a result, and quite naturally, my parents spent a lot of time and attention and care on her and gave me kind of a lot of leeway to do what I want. But it was almost like in our house, there's, there was always a conversation of finality. Mm. There was, and, and, and the fact that like, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people that watch this or, you know, have somebody in their life that, you know, gets a terminal illness or has, has a very tragic accident or has something that is really a shock, right? And it shocks everybody and everyone rallies around. But when you have someone who's so close to you in your family that is always on the edge of not making it, you come to terms with that and you begin to realize that, like, there are bigger issues at play and you're very thankful for the time you had. And, you know, when I started working in disasters, I began to recognize similar attributes in people that are going through a crisis where they were, they were actually much more resilient than almost anybody else I've met. I mean, I was in New York during 9-11 and folks who were downtown and in Manhattan had a much stronger resilience than people that were outside the city because their perception of the disaster was so great and they couldn't process it. Whereas when you're in it, you kind of say, okay, this is the new normal. We have to live in this, right? And here's how we're going to respond. And, you know, I, you know, I have a million stories of like, you know, during the tsunami of 2004 in Indonesia, I met a couple that asked me about designing a house and they were two people who had lost every member of their family except a couple of kids. They'd, they'd lost their spouses. And the housing for people were very basic, like a very basic wood box or metal box. But there wasn't a nuanced approach to housing for new families. And these two people, through this disaster, had fallen in love. Mm. They didn't know each other, but they had a shared situation they had a shared trauma which they had lost their spouses and they were trying to raise their kids they didn't have a job and all they were asking me as an architect to do was to design them a place where they can come together and be a new family that is not in the humanitarian design book right there's no like but what you find is like there's such incredible resilience in this space that you know the real vulnerabilities are the people like us the workers, the ones that don't see the blind spots, 